Let me start this video by calling out a fellow YouTuber. If you guys know Neze View, Neze Pepe Rempe, Neze Nwa, <laughs> go and ask her what she gave to me in JS1 that is making my life go in similar direction as hers, okay? <laughs> It's been all well and good though, it's been progress, it's been happiness, it's been joyful moments that we've been sharing like, you know, together. But this particular one, eh, 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 please, let's just stick to the progress and happiness and the good things that have been happening in our lives, okay? On a more serious note, before this thing happened to Neze and she made a video about it, I have never really heard of any other person that it's happened to, okay? I've heard of people that were turned back at whether UK border, just faint stories here and there. So when this thing happened to me, you guys, I was like, no now, no now. <laughs> hey, is this a joke? Are we joking here? So anyway, if you are new to this channel or if you are not familiar with the story I want to tell, I just recently relocated to the UK with my family and the first time we attempted to fly, okay? The first day, the first, our first flight, we missed our first flight in quotes because we were turned back at the airport okay so i'm here to give you guys the gist of everything that happened that made us get turned back at the airport but before i continue i saw some people in my comment section saying things like this must be a prank first of all how is it a prank if there is no surprise i was pranking you guys like how is it a prank or people don't understand the meaning of prank i don't get it okay and i remember that in that video i said by the way i injured my hand i went to go and buy a new knife i was looking for a sharp knife sharp knife that's why i go buy a new knife i can't cut my hand but anyway all i tried to say eh hey um in that video i said i will never wish that incident on my worst enemy okay and i was tempted to swear for somebody even though it's not by nature anyway and nobody's my enemy like you know rich <laughs> anyway so let me just tell you guys what happened right so you know my husband left before us okay we all applied for our uk visa together and my husband left before we left okay he left like he left on october 31st okay for people that don't understand the timeline my husband left on october 31st and me and the kids we are supposed to leave on December 21st okay we had to choose our flights in December when my kids will be done with school even though right now I'm like okay it didn't really change anything but you know I wanted them to be done with school and just so that I'll have enough time from when I come back from Canada because I stayed one month in Canada okay so we packed everything out anyway that's just for another dish I'll tell you guys the story of you know how this whole thing happened but now let's focus on why I was turned, why I was turned back at the airport so December the 21st was our flight time. So mind you, on December 18th, the people that were supposed to come and pull down all the lights and everything in our house, the lights, the solar panel, the inverter, the, the every all the electricals that we did in the house, cameras and stuff, they came on the 18th to pull down everything. And then the movers that came to move our things to uh, my mom's house, that's my, my parents' house in the village and my mother-in-law's house in Asaba. So they came on the 19th, right? So on that 18th, we moved to the temporary accommodation because we couldn't have stayed in that house without lights, without electricity or anything. Like, we, we, we just couldn't have done it. So we had to move to a temporary apart apartment which my husband paid for, okay? So he paid for temporary apartment for us to stay there for, I think we paid for four days or calculate however days, 18th to 21st. We were checking out on the 21st, so he paid for those days for us to stay in the apartment. Not a cheap apartment, but you know, it was, we wanted to be comfortable because my parents were around. Shout out to my parents. I have the best parents in the world, okay? I have the best parents in the world. Argue with your ancestors. <laughs> but yeah, my parents were there throughout. My dad was there, my mom was there. They were helping us, you know, helping us to park, helping us to take care of the kids, watch the kids, just keeping us company and, you know, moral support and everything, okay? So I was really, really glad that my parents were there. That was why we had to get a comfortable place. I'm just saying all this things. So I people calculate in your head how much, how much these people wasted for us anyway. So we spent all that money on the apartment. We were there with Amarati and Elizabeth. Everything was going smoothly, you know, counts down to the day we we're going to travel. So we were happy to travel. Everybody was happy, ready. I had my frozen food. Okay, so I cooked some soups that I was going to travel with and I kept them in Nelo's house, okay? Because in my house, in the temporary accommodation, they had just a fridge with a small freezer and I couldn't have put my food there. So in Nelo's house, I had all my food. I had, you know, some of my fish and stock fish. Everything was inside her freezer pending the day we'll travel. So day for traveling came. I went to her house. I carried the things, you know, everybody said goodbye, ready to go. I said goodbye to Nigeria. I have, you know, 
checked out mentally, physically, like I've checked out. I was just ready to go and see my husband. Funny enough, the the traveling to the UK was not really my you know what was driving me it was just i want to go and see my husband it's been a while let's reunite let's start settling down let's you know i needed to help him he was always telling me my husband has lost his kg by the way okay he was always telling me how you know he couldn't cook much because he had so much to do he had things to do so i was i felt bad for my husband i felt like oh i need to be there to cook for him give him good food even nigerian food you know everything everything you know so on the 20th, he booked a car that will come and pick us from the airport on the 22nd because mind you, we stay in Norwich. For anybody who is, you know, asking, we stay in Norwich, they call it Norwich, but me, I call it Norwich because of the spelling. So we stay in Norwich. So he booked a car. The car was over 500 pounds, okay? But anyway, the truth is that the company actually, you know, took care of it. Everything was set, you guys. And then we packed our things and Went to the airport, so to the airport, everything was going smoothly. We went to where they were going to check in our bags. They checked in, they not checking um weigh our bags, right? So they weighed our bags and put all the tags on the bags. We finished all of that, then I went to wrap three of the bags. So I called a guy that was to wrap the three bags. So he came and carried the three bags, three of the bags where I put full stuff. Like these bags are not boxes, they're just regular bags. I prefer wrapping such bags because I don't want anybody to choke hand anywhere or cut anything. Okay, so he took them to go and wrap. Now, if you watch that video, the first video where we were turned back, okay, if you watch the video, the guy that was weighing our bags was telling us that I should go for profiling. Um, I need your passport. Where are your passports? Yeah. You go for profiling first, okay? I'll just move the bag back, then I'll call somebody that is wrapping before you okay. come back. Eh, uh, because I want to just wrap. No, just mama, go and do profiling. Profiling, first. yeah. That person down down. Ma, ma, look, look at my hand. This young man that puts on eyeglass. Okay. I, I purposely added that part to that video. So anybody that watches watches that part, I can refer to it, okay? He said, um, you need to go for profiling. When you go for profiling, don't worry. I'll give them the bags to be wrapping for you. After your profiling, you'll come, then carry your bags and go and check in. He was tagging the weight of each bag on the bag, okay? So everything was already getting set. So I said, okay, go for profiling right here. So he showed me a table to go for profiling. And I went with my passport and my kid's passport. All our documents, basically. I got to the table and there was this guy. There were two people wearing glasses, right? So the first one who was standing... Um, you know, the guy was a bit friendly, okay? He was a bit friendly, even I don't like him, like, I don't like him, but he was a bit friendly. So when he, when I came, you know, he was like, ah, where are you going to? What are you going for? And I said, ah, my dear, I'm going to meet my husband while we're relocating to the UK. And he was like, ah, you want to leave us behind? You know, I just laughed. He was like, no, wow. You know, he now said, um, he now asked me, what's my husband's full name? I told him my husband's full name because there was a part on my on my daughter's passport my husband's name was written there but the middle name was an initial so he asked me what the initial was and i told him what the initial was he just said hmm okay that is a small issue but it's not a big problem but you know he has to show his somebody supervisor or something that our visas he needs to show you know somebody so i was like okay what's the problem he now showed me the visas right now on the visas on my on sophia and ava's visas my husband's name, as like the first name, initial, and surname is there. Okay, just somewhere under, like an annotation is written there, just a small, very small, faint writing. My husband's name is written there, okay? On my own and Cora's own, it was not there at all. So, when he showed me this, my first instinct was, okay. How is it a problem? Like, I didn't go and steal the visa and I'm like, this is proper visa. And even if I wanted to fake visa, will I go and fake for the two small ones? I won't fake for myself and my and my um, older daughter. Like, make it make sense. Like, to me, it was not a big deal. Like he said initially, he now gave it to his supervisor, who is the devil's younger brother, okay? And, and, and I'm saying this with all seriousness because... I took note of that guy's name, I took note of his face. Like, if I see him anywhere in the next 50 years, I will remember him, okay? Because of how... Because of how callous this guy was, of how... I don't know how to explain it. There's something about this guy that pisses me off. I've actually prayed to God to, to help me forgive the guy. Like, it's that bad. Like, maybe I've forgiven him, actually. I think I've forgiven him, but I've not forgotten. Like, I've not forgotten who you are because I went to go and Google this guy, yo. I, it's that bad. I went to Google this guy because I took note of his name. I can't remember his name anywhere in time, any day. I took note of his name. I went to Google this guy. And let me tell you what his profile says before I get into this gist. Let me tell you what his profile says. See, eh? 
if Nigeria happens to you, eh, you will understand. Nigeria showed me pepper, last minute pepper, like almost like you think you can just coast. After you finish coasting in Nigeria, you want to now fly and go out. Who do you think you are? Come here, let's show you some pepper that you will use and remember Nigeria for the rest of your life. <laughs> Because one thing about me, if I want to find somebody, I will find the person, okay? So I went to this guy's Twitter page and I saw where he wrote, Sometimes I pretend to be normal, but then again, it becomes boring, so I go back to being me. Okay, even the B itself, now B-E-E-N, it's all B-E-I-N-G. But let my English teacher, teacherness not come out because of you, okay? My petty English teacherness. <laughs> So you can imagine someone that has this type of profile, the kind of person that this person will be. I even saw on his Twitter where he was writing open letter to Donald Trump or something like, I was just like, it's one of those people that take themselves too seriously. It's one of those people that feel like they are more than what they are, okay? The kind of people that in secondary school will be covering their nose, meanwhile they write rubbish. <laughs> They'll be covering their book, but they're writing rubbish. Come kind on, of people that you tell them write names of noisemaker, they will write your name times three. Come kind on, of people that think they are the principal because they are mere eh, 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 labor prefect or you know one nonsense toilet prefect or something like that. But they, in their head, they're the principal. So you know the, the guy now came to meet me. No, he didn't even come to me. He sat where he was sitting, right? So I just turned to him and he was like, "What's your husband's full name?" I told him my husband's full name and he was like, "What does your husband do?" Now I smiled because I was like. Do I is this a question I'm supposed to be asking me? What does my husband do? Like, how does he concern this visa now? Like, the visa is it correct or is it not correct? Which is you with what my husband is doing. But anyway, what does your husband do? He now and I smiled and I said, Well, before I could even respond, he said, Oh, I, I hope you don't mind my asking because they wrote so and so thing on your husband on your visas, right? So at that point, I was thinking I'm talking to a normal human being. So I now smiled and I said, yes, that was actually, you know, how he relocated. But, you know, this is what he does and this is the company he works for. And, you know, this is how we decided to, this is how we shall are traveling. That's it. I don't, I don't want to give you too many, I don't want to give too many details, but this is how, you know, we are jack my head, basically. This is the process. He was like, okay, okay, because this thing that is omitted from my visa is actually a big issue, and that if he reports it, they are going to stop me from flying. And I was like, hey, hey. It didn't even sound like sensible to me, okay? Because I was like, reports to who? If you are reporting it to the UK Home Office, they are the ones that issued the visa. So, it's not going to be a problem. And if you know, you allow us go and we get to UK. Me, I know that how they do visas abroad is they scan your visa. They know they even use eye, they look up, say whether it's, they, they will scan it straight. If they scan it straight, all your information will come up. They'll even be asking you questions and be looking at your information to know whether it will correlate, okay? So, like, it's not a problem if they didn't write name somewhere. Anyway, there's something on it that if they scan. So, to me, it was like, which one they won't allow me to fly? It didn't make sense. So, he was like, I should he report it? I said, report it now because I did not go and fake visa. Did I steal the visa? Like, they don't like issue the visa. I'm sure they'll. They will say, oh, yes, there was our mistake or whatever, or our error. I was even saying, ah, that this one that they put for only Sophia and Ava, I was like, maybe if you're five years and below, there need to be written something on your visa just to be sure that, you know, you are going to meet. I don't know. I was just trying to rationalize it somewhere in my head because I didn't really think that it was a big deal like that, okay? So I was like, no, go ahead. He was like, if I could even say he should go ahead, he was like, if I let me just call it in, let me just call it in. Uh -uh. I was like, I can't do an arrest. Uh, okay, whatever. Call it in now. He now went ahead to call it in, in quotes, okay? In quotes because, because the things that happened afterwards proves to me that that guy was just a big fat liar. Mr. Let me not call your name. Let me not call your name. Now God say me cannot call your name, okay? You and I know that you do not contact any home office. Anybody that's watching this from Qatar Air, anybody that can give him this video, show him this video and tell him that me, I said that. Me and him know that he did not contact any use, any home office. He did not do anything. But let's just let's just leave it for God, okay? Let's leave it for God, okay? Let's leave it for those in Qatar Air to look into this. Because for me, if this is what you people do, then you people are actually being very wicked to Nigerians, okay? Because I'm sure as we did not travel, someone else traveled in our place. I'm, I'm very sure that happened, but... Well, I'm not very sure. I wasn't there, okay? But I think that's what happened, okay? They just look for anything to disqualify you so they can give your, 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 you know, your seeds to someone else. They can pay, they can sell it to someone else for, you know, lots of money. That is what I think happened, but let me not assume, okay? Because I don't work there. I don't know what is happening there. Anyway, so that's how he said, oh, he's going to contact home office. We should, me and my, we should go and sit down outside somewhere. At that point, I called my parents. I told my parents what was going on. You know, my parents were like, ah, which one is this one again, okay? 
So I told my parents what was going on and I just, you know, waited for him to contact the home office. In fact, while we were now waiting for him to, you know, get back to us, time was going on. Mind you, we got there, my, our flight was 4.20. We got there past 12, okay, because we left the house by 12. So let's say we got there 12, 30 something, right? Because it takes like 30 minutes to go to the airport from our house, from my area. So let's say we got there 12, 30 something. Um, yeah, we were there oh, 1 o'clock past, 2 o'clock past, 3 o'clock past. Ha! And now we all ask the guy, okay, what what's happening? And he'll be like, oh yeah, that we let's just wait. He's waiting for them to get back to us, to that is to him, right? I was like, okay. In my front self, the guy took call. I was trying to, I was waiting for him, trying to ask him, you know, what's up. He took his phone, started talking to one of his friends, started laughing, gisting with one of his, almost like. <sighs> Look at no vex. Anyway, so I went back to sit down, told my parents what was happening. You know, hmm. my mom was like, "Here." Yeah. My father was like, "Huh?" Then Cora and Eva and Sophia were sitting. I want to be. I want to be. They didn't understand what was going on. They didn't know that <laughs> there's fire on the mountain. So they went. You know, I think on Amarachi was there because Amarachi was when I was taking them to the bathroom and all of that. While me, I was just standing there, you know, waiting for this guy. You know, but I was still trying to secure our bags. Even the guy that helped us to weigh the bags was still asking me how far, how far, you know, because he was he wanted something, but it was like how far that he's about to go. I said, okay, go now. I don't understand. If you want to go, go now. Like, am I supposed to give you money for when you're doing your job when I'm not even flying? Like, oh okay. God. I went to one more side. While we were there, I now went to um one of the ladies that was wearing kata uniform. I went to meet her that okay. Oh, I'm seeing that, you know, uh, checking time is coming to an end though. Like, see what's happening with me, you know, my documents are she was like, no, 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 no. No, hey, hey, that she's not the one in charge of uh, um, what's the name? She's not in charge of uh, documentation. It's their job. It's their job. I was like, Auntie, calm down. I'm just telling you this so that at least if in the nick of time, you know, they give us our passports back, you will know that we've been here since, so so that you just check us in. You know, even if it's late checking in, but at least you check us in, knowing that we've been standing here all this while. She was like, hey, no, no, it's not her job. But hey, 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 she just left. I said, okay, no wahala. <sighs> no wahala. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. She left. So I went back to meet this guy. Okay, what's happening? The guy now, you know, I waited. I, me and mom were now standing close to where he was. I'm sure our presence there was now making him uncomfortable. Next thing, he now took phone. Now pretending like he was on the call. He said, eh, hey. I, yes, I purposely said he pretended like he was on the call because of the things that happened afterwards, okay? He pretended like he was on the call and said, okay, about the family that is traveling, the family of four, this, 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 that. Okay, okay. Next thing he now turned to us and said, um, yes, they said that you have to go back to their office for reissuance. I was like, come again? Excuse me? Reissuance of, what is reissuance? Like at that point, I didn't even, I don't even understand the word again. <laughs> I don't even understand the meaning of reissuance again. I was like, reissue it. You mean I should go back for the, no, it can't, it can't mean what I think you are saying it means. It can't mean that now. So I was like, I, I don't understand. He said, yeah, that's how they do, that they'll, they'll, they'll give visas. When you now contact them, they'll now deny it. That we have to go back to their office for them to reissue us a new visa. I was like, do they have an office here? Are we still going to travel today? Like, because this was around 3.30, okay? Mind you, we are supposed to uh, uh, fly by 4.20, okay? So I think at this point, they started closing the counter because some people already left, okay? Some of the people that were even at that profiling place they've already left some of the people that were taking care of the luggage and stuff they've already left okay so and okay now two things that happened when the guy reported this in right because that guy that i said you know was friendly but i don't really like him he was friendly i heard him talking to another guy there and was saying uh-uh did he go and report it in then that one now said yes and i said uh-uh now for what now if for no reporter that's what the the friendly guy said if for no reporter now that's when I knew that, okay, so this thing is optional. It's not like you must. It's, there's something like, there was something fishy about the whole situation. Like, if I don't report them now. So I now asked the friendly guy, I was like, okay, is there something we can do about it? Like, is there something we can do to help the situation? Like, do I need to bring supporting documents? I think initially he thought maybe I was trying to say whether I bribe my way. I'm not bribing shit, okay? I'm not bribing you because of what I did not steal, okay? So I wasn't talking about bribing, but I was thinking about, okay, would they say bring supporting documents? So bring your wedding certificates, your marriage certificates, bring their birth certificates, bring, you know, your kidney, bring your genotype, bring your, you know, I don't know, bring your life insurance, I don't know, whatever. Is there any supporting document that needs to be 
brought so that they can allow us go. The guy was like, ah, no, there's no. Like, you could, I could tell from his face. I don't even know why I said I don't like him. I, I, I know I don't like him because he's a bit slimy. But, you know, I could tell from his face that he was like, child, this one don't enter. Sorry. You know. But you know the funny thing, eh? Now, hey, let me just, let me just, you know, debate a bit. I know people like this, so just listen. Even though the video is long, just listen, okay? Let me debate a bit, okay? But now, eh, that situation made me understand when the Bible says that if you are lukewarm, you know, God will spit you out essentially, okay? You should be hot or cold. That if you are lukewarm, it's going to spit you out, okay? Because there was a guy, now, the bad guy who is the cold one or hot, I don't know how to describe him, Sha. The bad guy in quote, okay, the devil's younger brother, <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling him that. The bad guy in quote, okay, I don't even hate him. That's the funny part. Like, I feel anger towards him when I remember what he did. Just like, ew, just ew, just go away, okay? The other person, the one that was nice-ish, that was saying, I don't really like him either. I don't really hate him, you know, or I don't really have any likeness towards him per se, but, you know, I can understand him too. The person that was so annoying to me, mm, was one guy that sat down there like a stone like you literally could like you could mistake him for a sculpture he sat down there like a stone when i was trying to ask questions he did not answer when i was trying to talk to the you know the other guy he was he didn't answer he did not blink he was just looking at some point when i was trying to get answers i was trying to you know talk to somebody you know this person was busy this person was busy he was just there looking i was trying to talk to him this guy gave me a blank look like he wasn't even responding to me he wasn't even just blinking he wasn't even pretending like oh i cannot hear you i can hear you the guy was just there like a stone I said that guy, eh, like, if there's anybody in this whole story that is the real villain, it is you. Because you cannot, you're not helping, but you're not even, you're not even, like, you're, not, you're just dead. They're just, like, you just don't care. That's the point. You just don't care. I'd rather you hate me or you like me. But being like that is just terrible, okay? Instead, leave that place. If you cannot, if you cannot add mouths, if you cannot, you know, give information or, you know, or whatever, just, just leave that place. You don't need to sit down there like a stone. Somebody's talking to you, you're ignoring the person. Like, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Come on, get out. <laughs> I might be like someone that is drunk. But anyway, okay, so, uh, yeah, the reissuance talk, and I was like, what? Like, what? And I remembered, okay, at this point, oh, I already forgotten that part. At this point, after they told us that first English about, oh, uh, there's this annotation that you don't have on your passport, blah, 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 blah. I called my husband immediately, okay, sent him messages, sent him the pictures of the, of the visas, told him everything that was going on, you know. So, he was trying to contact um, HR, um, the HR was trying to contact the agent, the agent was trying to contact the home office, like, mails were just flying left, right, and center because he, my husband was copying me in all of the mails, okay. So, mails were just flying left, right, and center, you know, and all of that. So, while we were now waiting, after he told us the reissuance stuff, while we were now waiting, I went to meet one of the ladies that works there, right, to ask her if I can open... I think I met that woman initially talked to her. She was like, no, 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 I left. Not the first one, this is another person. No, 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 I left. So, I now went back to her to ask her if I can open our tickets because, I mean, obviously, we're going to miss our flight, so let me go and open our tickets so that, you know, we don't have to... Um, um, buy new tickets, right? Even though it's the company that paid for the tickets. I got somebody in my comment section, you know, going up and down, trying to correct people that, oh, it is the company that paid for the business class tickets, not her husband. Before Uncle, before Uncle, do I want to even pay for it? It's like, why should I use my money and pay for it? When I, when I, like, I was so happy that company was paying for it. Like, before Uncle, so don't think that you're trying to shade anybody by that. Like, I'm, <laughs> Anyway, so I went to meet her to tell her. She was like, no, the time is already passed. Like, she was so, like, each person I went to talk to, it's only one woman, okay? And I'll get I'll get to her later. It's only one woman that even come down to talk to us like a like normal human being. Every other person, as you just come to say, please, can you? Eh, 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 eh. I was like, waiting they happen for here now. Like, what is, go like, what is it? Like, calm down. Cal like, calm. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting angry again. It was very annoying. Imagine going to meet somebody to even ask questions. I'm just like, already like, they've already assumed what you want to ask. They're like, no, 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 uh uh. Calm down. Even if I'm asking you for money, Seth, calm down. Hear me out. Then, if you now don't have money, tell me you don't have money. Not that I come and meet you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. So, um, you know, I told her about tickets and she said, you cannot do it, that's already passed, blah, 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 that we should have done this before, with is it three o'clock or whatever, but now it's already passed, it's already a no-show. I was like, anyway. Then at that point, I got a call from a UK number and she introduced herself as 
a UK immigration lawyer that you know she, the company contacted her to sort out the whole issue that you know all the issues I'm going through now to try and see if I can fly with my flight okay she now said that should I um, that she now asked me that who is the person that rejected you know that said we should not fly I told her who it was that she said okay that I should take the phone and go and give it to that person let her talk to the person okay so I put the phone on speakerphone. I now went to the guy. I told the guy, okay, please, this is a UK immigration lawyer, and she said she wants to talk to you. You know about the guy was like, no, 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 no. He cannot talk to anybody on somebody's phone. Uh, say any, 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 a regular, unofficial phone. No, no, no. He cannot do that. That they know how they send emails. They should go and send emails to Qatar Air. That they will deal with it there. That I should not. I was like, God, calm down. She wants to talk to you, try and explain some things to you. Just listen first. He was like, no, 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 no. He's not going to listen. No, as in he was so heated. Like you would think, eh. That if you're taking that phone from me, fire the phone for explodes for your hand. Or somebody will choke knife through the phone and choke his ears. Like you will think that. I'm telling you, you will think I was giving him molten lava to hold. Because I was like, even my mom was trying to, I'm sure she was trying to play, you know, good cop or all that college. She was trying to, you know, sympathize with him small to see if he would he will calm down. Because she was saying, ah, my mom was saying, ah, that yes, yeah, she understands him, that he cannot just go and, you know, listen to anybody from an unofficial line or whatever, a passenger's phone that, you know, is actually wrong for him to do that. And then and then I didn't allow my mom to even finish talking. I told her no. I understand where, where you're coming from. I understand, but no, okay. Because if your goal is to try and help a passenger, if your goal is to do the right thing, basically not even try and help a, help a passenger. If your goal is to do the right thing, and you know that millions of naira is about to go down the drain, with these people not being um, allowed to travel, as a human being, as a human being with a human heart. Anyway, why am I saying human being? Human beings are actually wicked. The heart of man is especially wicked, okay? So let me not say as a human being. But as a child of God, if you're a child of God. <laughs> as a Christian, I don't know what to appeal to. As a Christian, if you're a Christian. As a Muslim, if you're a Muslim. As a, no, it's not a, that guy is definitely a Christian, okay? As a, you know, as, as a human being, basically, Sha. What I expect you to do is to listen to what the person has to say, right? Because the person is not giving you orders. The person is not telling you you must do this. Listen to what the person has to say. Then prefer a solution or tell the person, okay, no, we can't take this because this, 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 this. Okay, explain to the person. Because we are trying to do an unofficial, not unofficial, but we're trying to, how do I put it now? We're trying to make things go faster. Okay, so we are trying any means that we can try. So listen first. Even if you listen and maybe it's one Nigerian in one room somewhere faking accent and pretending to be who she's not, at least listen. When you hear first, you tell the person, oh, no, I know they do this one way they talk. But this one, the guy refused to listen. No, I will try. Okay, who can talk to her? Nobody wanted to take this phone from me to talk to this lady. And now, you know, talk back to the lady and told the lady that nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. She was like, really? Like, why? Okay, she said, okay, explain to me again what's, their, what's the point, what their issue is. I explained to her again. And she was like, so they don't allow you fly? I said, yes. As in, I could tell that she was dumbfounded. Like, she couldn't understand it. But she was just trying to, you know, play along. But she was like, they don't allow you fly because of this, this, this. I told her, yes. And she was like, ah, ah. She now kept quiet. She said, okay, can I just find anybody that can accept, that can take this phone from me, right? So then, okay, I was now asking the guy, okay, um, is there an email that we can send it to? He said, oh, they know the email. They know the email. She can send it She can send to the email. She was trying to explain to him that, she was on speakerphone, she was trying to explain to him that of course they know the email to send to, to, to send to Qatar Air, right? They know the Qatar Air email to send to, right? But if they do that, before Qatar Air will see the email and respond to the email, we've, I mean, we've already, they've almost closed, they've almost like closed for the day. Like I won't be able to fly with that flight. We're already late as it is, but at least if they had answered us immediately, we could have still entered, maybe run to the plane or something. But you know, so she was trying to explain to him that of course she understands the email route, okay? No, she's not stupid, but she's trying to explain to you that this thing is very cutting very, very close to time. If she does not contact somebody directly now, you know, talk to the person face to face now, it's going to be very difficult to get us on that flight, okay? The guy refused though. Anyway, I now went to another lady. Now, that, that lady is, you know, the person I said that she was God sent, okay? Because, I mean, she didn't really help us per se, but at least she listened. And she was the one that... When this first thing, when this whole thing happened, she went to calm my mother down. I'm even surprised that 
all of us we are kind of calm. Even though my mother was not happy, but she was not her usual self. My mother, on a normal day, she will act drama for people. She can lie down on the floor there and start crying. She can scream at you. She can she can act drama for you so that you will know that this is serious, okay? But for some reason, I think she was even praying. I could hear her praying at some point. Like God was just coming her down, just telling her, you know. Then that lady now came and told her that she should not worry. Everything happens for a reason. That she should just calm down, you know. She should just that everything it is well. It is well. That's what the woman told her. So my mom was now calm. But even though me, I was like. It's not happening for any reason. Nothing like everything happens for a reason. This one, the reason is that you people want to sell my tickets. That's the reason. Nothing like everything happens for the reason. Like, you like, ew, if you don't fly, maybe the flight will have will crash. Nothing they happen. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing would have flown that flight and nothing would have happened. Okay. So, um, I now took the phone on speaker and I went to meet this particular lady. She was very pleasant. She was like, initially she wanted to say, oh no, that she cannot talk to. I now explained to her. She said, okay, just give me the phone. She now took the phone, listened to the woman. The woman now explained everything to her. She now said, okay, that what she can do for the woman is you give the woman an email that they themselves have access to, not Qatar Air now. Like it's a Qatar Air email, but Qatar Air email for that, for the staff at the airport there. So she'll give them an email that the moment they send the email from home office confirming that we can fly, that they will allow us to fly. But that she should just understand that this thing is already very late, a very close counter, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that, you know, she can send it and then we'll look for another fl flight um, ticket and then the next time we want to fly, they will allow us to fly. Okay, so at that point, they, they really couldn't we really couldn't enter the flight i think it was already like two four or something already four o'clock it was already too close you know so i already knew that ah you know it's not gonna happen again but let's at least sort out the issue so that i can fly at, at a later date she now said okay let her go and meet her uh, supervisor to ask for the email we now went to meet the supervisor one guy like that you know the guy was okay but he was telling me that he said all these things that we are doing that i should just go to UK office at Presidential now that it, before they close, that they close by 5 p.m. I should just go to their office at Presidential and see if they can reissue me a new visa. I was just looking at this guy like this. I was like, if now you, if now your family member this thing happened to, will you be talking like this? Like, let's 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 cut the crap, let's cut the bullshit, okay? Put yourself in people's shoes for, for crying out loud. If it was your family, if it was you that's supposed to fly, your family, you are in a, a foreign country and your children are supposed to come and meet you before Christmas, and this is happening to them, you will tell them, eh, just go to the I'm not calling you. Anyway, let me not get angry with that guy because he, for the most part, he was just normal. He wasn't like, he wasn't good, he wasn't bad, he was just normal for the most part. When he was even saying that, and I said, no, just give me the email, make sure you send them. So he gave us, he gave the, because I was still on speakerphone with the woman, she didn't even call the call throughout. Even when I was just waiting, not saying anything, she was still on the call. I could just hear her typing, pa 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 I could hear from the, from the uh, speakerphone. I was just hearing, pa 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 She was just typing. So, the guy now, she now, she now, okay, the guy now told her the email. She took the email down, and then, you know, that was why she now told me that, you know, that she would try and get me a flight the next day, that I should not be sad, you know, just trying to apologize for everything, that I should just, you know, take it easy, that the next day she would try and get, get us on the next flight you know to um to uk okay so i was like okay no problem no problem no problem you know she was just trying to console me no problem no problem we now caused the call i now called my husband my husband was so angry like i could tell that the guy was mad <laughs> he was even more angry than me that was going through it eh? because he was like what what hell, what the hell man like so he just copied me in the email and everything you know um, at that point, it was obvious that I wasn't flying again. It was already like past four. I think it was even past maybe four thirty seven or something. Flight was supposed to be four twenty. It was already four thirteen. It was as in in my in my presence, they closed counter, they closed up, they left. In my presence, the airport was clearing out. In my presence, okay, I was like, <laughs> in fact, all the customs people because I think I don't know how Portacot Airport is, but I think it's just sometimes just one flight that will fly. For a particular time or a particular day, I don't know, because I didn't really see other airlines and stuff operating. It was only, only that Qatar Air. Um, so yeah, even the customs people they were just looking at us because I mean we passed there, they even collected money from us and all of that. I had to pay for my food stuff. Because someone asked me this question. I had to pay, they checked my bag that had food stuff, and I had to pay eight thousand naira. They gave me a certificate and all that, okay. But they didn't ask me for my cook's food though. It was the Full stop. They say they want to check and be sure that it is food yeah, uh, export quality. They didn't really check much. They just weighed the bag and then charged me 8k based on the weight. They now asked me if I had oil or yam and I was like, no, I don't have any of those. Okay, I didn't carry those ones. I actually bought yam to carry, but I ended up not carrying because, yeah, there was really no point. 
and her yams are quite heavy anyway. And my kids were not really yam fans like that. Well, me, I love yam, but my kids are not really yam fans, so I didn't really care. So, you guys, I was so tired. Like, ah, I can't even explain. See, I don't wish it on anybody, Shag. Like, I'm still saying it. No matter what, no matter the kind of comments you want to make, I don't even still wish it on you because it's almost like you've seen the tunnel light at the end of the tunnel someone now shuts the tunnel off like that's how the thing was and i don't mean light at the end of the tunnel in sense of oh we're going to a better place or anything no i mean like this is your goal okay this is what you have worked towards towards for the past how many days and weeks and stuff this was what you were working towards and then when the time for that thing now reaches they now cut it short we were so sad we we're just there that guy the, the if you see himself with his glasses, his glasses had white rims. He was just passing. You could just tell that it's all these people that used to feel like they are what they are not. Like in his head, eh, he's the head of Qatar Air. Okay, in his head, he's Richard Branson. He's a he's the head of uh, <laughs> Virgin <laughs> Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> <sighs> like seriously, I could tell that he was feeling himself. Um, when he came and passed us safe, as per hey, you peasants that are left in the airports, me, I have, I'm going home. You know that kind of thing. Okay, he was so happy with himself, and I was like, no wahala, no wahala. What even pained me the most in all of these things is that children we are involved. Like, if it's just me alone traveling, and you do that to me, okay? I will understand it, I will, I will chest it, like I will chest it very well. But you see children running around. You see my mom, my parents, we are there, okay? In fact, <laughs> the next time we came to the airport, when we started, we wanted to fly, one of the customs guys said, why are you they carry your mama up and down? <laughs> I told the man, that she no one go, because I told my parents to leave. Anyway, I'm getting some of that. But the guy said, why are you they carry your mama up and down? I'm like, see me see, wala, my mama go carry it before. I never can carry my mama now, see me see, wala. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so, but that was it though. That was how we had to pack our things. I now saw the email where the home office, two people from the home office confirmed that, you know, it was, it was an administrative error, but they should allow us fly. It's not a big deal, right? They confirmed it in their email. Two different people from the home office, okay? Now, the question I want to put to you, Mr. Who did you contact in the home office that told me to go back for reissuance? Who exactly did you contact? Because two people from the UK home office, so, no be Niger presidential, uh, 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 presidential hotel uh, UK visa processing office. I'm talking about two people from the UK home office. Two different people sent emails confirming that this, this um, visas are valid and this visa on, and they should allow us fly. Two different people. So who the, who the hell did you contact? That's why I said that you and I know that you didn't contact anybody. You and I know that it's either you are conniving with the airline to sell tickets to people Okay, because that's four tickets. Okay, so if if another family wanted to to travel, you are either conniving with the airline to sell tickets to people, or you're just a sadist. Okay, and even if you, even if you are just you are conniving with the airline, you are still a sadist. Nobody deserves to be turned back at the airport for something as flimsy as that as, as that, knowing that you know they've already planned, they've already paid for flight. Anyway, nobody deserves to go through that. So. Me and you, both of us know that you were, we were, all those things you were doing in the airport was theatrics, was drama, you were acting drama, you are just feeling yourself and it's okay. I hope you sleep better at night, I hope it, it, it gives you more money, I hope you know it makes you a happier person in life, I'm glad, if it makes you happy, I'm glad to be of, of service, I'm glad to make you happy, okay? Because if it did not make you happy, if it did not give you any extra satisfaction, then it go pay me, oh, now then it go pay me pass because one of us has to have been has to have been happy for what happened, okay? If it's not me that I mean, obviously I was sad. So I hope you are happy because if you are not happy too, if you're not a happy person right now, <laughs> I'll be angry with you. Better be a happy person. But anyway, yeah, that was it though. That was how you know we went back. My father even had to enter a car. That's what I showed you guys. When we were out, we went out, okay. We couldn't get a car from there. I don't even know what happened, but they didn't have any cars. I think because there was no flight arriving at that time. So there was no taxi for us to, you know, to take us back. So my father had to enter a stranger's car. My parents tried for me, Sha. My father had to enter a stranger's car. The guy now dropped my father in the domestic airport and my father now booked a, a a taxi from there then taxi now came back now carried our thing and then you know i drove back home right <sighs> at that point cora already cried you know because cora actually cried though she cried in that airport like she cried like she cried very well me i didn't even cry me i was even smiling so i don't know why i'm not someone who i don't know i feel like i have opposite reaction for so many things is that i have no reaction or opposite reaction like what do you expect not how i'm going to react okay to so many things like I've, i know that okay that was how we now got back home 
it wasn't funny my parents were supposed to leave the next day they couldn't leave in fact i was i was telling them to leave because at, at that point i was like see there's no point them missing the village missing christmas my younger brother was in the village there's no point for them being in port harcourt and miss out on all these things you know just because we're just waiting okay at that point okay while we were driving home i missed this part okay why we this video is going to be very long anyway while we were driving home my husband called me and said where am i now i told him that i'm on my way home he said have i left the airport like entirely i said yes we're already like closer to home than the airport right and he was like okay they got us a flight the next day but it is in lagos that he has already told them oh, that he's not going to allow me fly enter that flight because it would have meant that we would enter flight that night to lagos and then the next morning i will now start rushing out trying to meet that other flight okay because that other flight that's the next day's flight was supposed to leave by 10 a.m so it means that i'll get to lagos that night and then take care of my kids alone and then in the morning i don't even know how i'm going to even manage all the good all the loads imagine remember i had frozen food how's that even though i would have left my frozen food behind Sha, but how that manage all the loads we had 12 bags though we had 12 bags we had um you know the three kids and then uh, we didn't have a booking for a hotel in Lagos. It was already night. Okay, so my one was saying that they, they said they were, they were telling me to go back to the airport and go and take a flight. They've already tried to book a flight for me from Patakos Airport to Lagos to Lagos that night. Then from Lagos the next morning, I will now my husband told them, nope, 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 she's not gonna do that because I mean he he can't guarantee my safety. Lagos is not the kind of place that you just go to without any plan. Who will help me carry my load? Which car will I hire? Like, in fact, I was so proud of my husband because I was like, this man knows, he knows his wife, he knows I'm not cut out for that kind of suffering. <laughs> he knows, he knows I'm not cut out for that kind of suffering. And it, yeah, it just didn't make sense, you know. Just because I want to fly doesn't mean that I'm that desperate, I beg. So he told them no. They now eventually said they've gotten another flight, but it's going to be on the 26th. That's why I want to go with that. I said, I don't get a choice now. If that's the earliest date you guys can get, then what am I gonna do about it? Like, what <laughs> I can do about it now? Yes, I'll take it. So that was how we now got flight on the 26th, one day after Christmas. So I'll say my parents that there's no need for them just being with us there doing nothing 20, 21st 22nd 23rd 24th 25th you know i tell them to just go but the next day my mom said she's not going to go that she was not going to rest until we leave yeah i understand her because she won't even enjoy that village very well imagine enjoy trying to enjoy yourself but knowing what your children are going through your grandchildren are going through it's not going to be fun so she said she's not going that she will stay but my father had meetings okay he had meetings in the village so i just told him to go okay so him my father left the next day which was 22nd he left in the morning he entered taxi or he didn't even carry his car that we need the car during that period for any emergency or any running around or any just if you want to go out he need the car so he left the car for me took public transport and left and you know came back on 25th so the vlog where we were living the vlog started from after i picked my father from the park and came back my kids were even dressed one was wearing uh, 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 just t-shirts nightwear that was how we were i went to pick my father then came back then i now made the video about how i wasn't feeling well because that night when i got back that's the 21st night when i got back i was okay oh. i was just talking about the whole thing i was like eh. i was not calling on my friends telling my friends okay now nah. i know they go again no. <laughs> I remember chatting the low up that I did not go again. She was like, eh, she even called me because she was in the village that time. She now called me straight up. She was like, eh, what are you saying? I was like, my dear, I did not go again. No. She was like, how? You know, I don't, tell her, don't worry, I'll explain to her later. You know, because where she was was noisy. She was in the village for her cousin's wedding. Then uh, who else again? I told her my I told Soti. Soti was around. In fact, Soti came to my house the next day. Was it the next day or two days later? Soti came to see me. She even invited me for Christmas party on Christmas day, but I was like, sister, I couldn't, that Christmas day, I actually wanted to go, but I wasn't feeling too well, so I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm not feeling well, though. like, this sickness is not letting me up, so she was, you know, sympathetic, so I didn't want to go anywhere, I didn't have the zeal to go anywhere, I didn't have the urge, I didn't have the feeling to go anywhere, I was just indoors throughout the four days, I think I went to buy snacks and from some more food stuff, but, because we already finished everything we had, thinking, okay, we're about to leave, but I had to just go to the market again, buy things, to come and cook, but I didn't go anywhere, I didn't see anybody, except when Soti came to my house, I didn't see anybody, I was just down, okay, I was down, like, I think my own manifested as sickness, because, fun fact, okay, fun fact, I was very, 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 very sick, okay, until, even the 26th that we were traveling, I was sick, right, but the moment we checked in, <laughs> the moment we checked in, and we went to the business class lounge, okay, the moment we checked in, 
I could not sniff any kata again in my nose. There was no kata, there was no headache, there was no fever. Me that I was shivering the night before. Me that I, I was having headache that morning. Me that I was sniffing kata up and down <laughs> on the way to the airport. The moment we checked in, I was looking for kata in my nose. I don't find out. <laughs> That's just to show you that, that that sickness that I was going through was not actually physical sickness, if I should really put it that way. It wasn't a real physical sickness. It was more like mental that now translates to physical, you know, illness. Anyway, that was it. So on the 26th, my father came back on the 25th. Then on the 26th, you know, we packed up again. I went to the lost house again to go and carry my food back because I was like, this food, I must travel with you. <laughs> Although we ate one soup, I brought one soup and we ate it there because I couldn't go and start cook looking for how to cook or prepare or even buy. I said, I better bring out one of those to make we chop, make we enjoy first. We brought out the soup, we ate it, whacked it first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so but the rest I kept it in the lost house. So that's 26. I went to a house, collected all my food back, packed everything back, and headed for the airport again. When we now go to the airport now, hmm, I was already ready for fights. If you see when I walk into the airport, eh, I was walking like this. I was ready to fight anybody. <laughs> I was ready for anybody. Like, who, who do you think you are? I'm ready for you. Anyway, so when we got to the airport, the immigration people now did not even ask us for anything again. You know? They were like, ah, these people, yeah, so remember that these people will not travel that day. Ah, how are you people doing? You're not nice to us. I was like, wow. I'm like, hey, sorry, oh, sorry. What's it happen now? Nah? Hey, everyone was like, hey. Even the guy that, you know, I paid for the full stop that gave me certificate and all of that. When he saw me, he was like, ah, yes, 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 yes. I don't need I should just go. I should just go. They were pissing us. I was like, <laughs> when they were even asking me, ah, what's happened? I said, my dear, hmm, what I went through in these past few days, there you were on that stage. <laughs> That's when that guy now said, you see the kind of mama up and down. I said, my dear, what I'm going to do now? She no one go now. Ah, she said, she don't suffer. They were like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Just make another go. Put your things here. Oh, yeah, make another go. <laughs> I now carry my things, went to the guy that was weighing the things again. The guy already saw that all the bags were weighed, but he reweighed them. They were all the same, except I think one bag. The bag I removed uh, one soup from was different. So he now, those just two bags had to be retired. Whatever that thing was the same weight. Because I didn't open any bag. You see that dress I wore? I wore that my Jalabia, what would I call that thing? Kaftan. I wore that thing throughout. I, I washed it in the night, wait in the morning. I sleep naked. Like I did not want to open any bag for anything, okay? So um yeah so all the other things were exactly how they were except those bags that i opened and removed food stuff and all of that so this time we actually got to the airport very early i think we left the house like 10 o'clock so we got to the airport like before 11. so when we got to the airport i went straight to the desk that guy that said that gave us the email i went straight to him and the moment he saw me he was like oh they are here don't worry we'll allow you fly don't worry we'll allow you fly i was like okay because i printed out all kinds of documents i printed out all kinds of documents i printed out the email i printed out everything you know came to meet him he just said no no don't worry don't worry remember you you're going to fly even the lady said when she saw me that is the one that listened to the woman when she saw me she was smiling she was like ah you're here today i was like my dear i'm here today after the enemy did not succeed i'm here again <laughs> so she's like don't worry if i went to fly just go so so after they finished wearing our bags this time funny enough they didn't tell me to go for profiling they told me to just stand in the business class line then i went to call somebody to come and do the profiling for us i was like so that's one of the perks. So I didn't know. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So let her come and do it. Okay. So the lady now came. A lady this time. She now came. She took our our passports. Then she looked at them. She now said, Ah, there's, a, there's an error with your passport. I said, We've been through this. Okay. I was here on the 21st and we've been through this. Go and ask them. Okay. We've been through this before. She was like, Oh, okay. You've been here before. I said, Yes. Go and ask them. Okay. She now went to the guy. Now came back. Now said, Oh, that can I come with her? I think they told her to come and call me. I said, okay. I left my bags there. I now went with her. When I got there, when I, when I got there, I was just looking at them like this. The nicest one, okay? The nice one. I said, ah, madam, you are here again. I said, yes. Like I was stone faced. I was, <laughs> I wasn't trying to smile with anybody. Then the other guy now said, oh, that, oh yeah, that, okay. He, when he, when the lady gave him the, passport that is the supervisor that is the one that was wearing the glasses the white glasses when she gave him the passport he was like oh yes 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 that he knows about it that she she should allow us fly she was not like eh because she didn't really understand she was like eh he now and i showed him the email i said okay i have the emails here and i gave him the emails he now took the emails was now going to the emails i was just stone faced i wasn't even looking at him i was just looking straight like looking into into it he now said he now went through the email 
you know, went through the email. Next thing, after looking at it, he now said, oh, so they agree that it is an administ administrative error. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I was just looking straight where I was looking. He now said, um, uh, madam, so they have agreed that it's an administrative error. I just looked at him. Yes. Because at that point there, uh, I was fighting the urge to say, I think say so you said you talk you talk to home office, Oga. Okay? <laughs> I was fighting the urge to tie my cloth and say, I thought you said, I thought you said that you talk to the home office. Eh? I thought that's what you said. So who is this? Who are these two people now that are saying that it is their error and they should allow us fly? Who are these two people? I was I was fighting that urge. And the reason why I was fighting that urge, I was like, make I reach my destination first. Hmm? Make I go where they send me first. If I go do story time, I go do story time. No, wala. I was just thinking of how I'll sit down and do the story time. So I was just trying to calm myself down because that was the urge I had. So I was just like, make I reach where they go first before I start another one. Now that they will now use and turn to something else, okay? Because apparently those people have power. Either what it means. Apparently, somebody on that seat can just tell you rubbish and they will, and they will stop you from flying. So make I reach where they go first, too. Anyway. When he now finished, I said, okay, she shall allow us go. He now gave me my email back. I just turned. I never said thank you or anything. Ah, just took my email and left. Went, checked in, did everything. Ah, I was checking in and I was like, yay, I was so excited. Checked in, they gave us all our um, boarding passes, tagged all our bags, put all the bags through. I didn't have any issues with any bag, you know, they didn't, I didn't have any issues with any bag, okay, because I packed well, like, I packed very, very well. I did my research before traveling, so anything that I know that is not allowed, I did not try. I didn't even try to smuggle in anything, or I just, you know, like, it's not worth it to me, okay? Even people that say, oh, they freeze red oil or they don't freeze, I did not even try. I just told myself, see, the one way they say make you carry, carry. The one way they say make you no carry, no carry, okay? I made sure all my batteries and stuff were inside my hand luggage, so... All my bags just passed one time, no wahala. Then, you know, we now went to the lounge to go and stay and wait for our flight. Time for our flight, one lady just came, took us downstairs, and we went and we flew, okay? And we flew. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, so I said goodbye to my parents, you know, and then we just went. And we left, okay? Now, one more part that I need to add to this video because I think this was when everything that happened to me now hit me even harder okay when we got to the uk border right when we got to the uk border where they will check us and allow us to pass okay you guys know like yeah the, the basically your last stop before you carry your bag and you know go home the uk border immigration people right when we got there the truth is that i would have felt better if they had said hmm name is not here name is not here what happened? Can you back it up? Bring emails, you know, make calls. Although I, I would have felt better if we had done all those panic books. Okay. <laughs> Parapo. I don't know what the word is. <laughs> if we had done all those parapo, yes, parapo. If we had done all those parapo at that UK border, okay, you know, of course, flying, saying, oh no, it's an error, this, that, this, that, okay, okay. If we had done it there, eh, I would have felt okay. These uh, people in Lagos, at least we did not fly when we were supposed to fly. I mean, these people in the uh, Portacords, at least we did not fly when we were supposed to fly. But thank God they delayed us. So, if not, that's how they have reached here now. I wouldn't have known that sent us. I would have felt better. But do you know what happened at the UK border? They, I, they came, you know, I was with my kids and everything and our passports. They would just ask, okay, who is Sophia? And Sophia, you should, should say hi. Oh, hi, Sophia. Who is Eva? Oh, hi, Eva. Who is um, Cora? Oh, hi, Cora. Oh, yeah, this, okay. Okay, uh, when they ask me normal questions, okay, who is your um, who is your husband? What do you do? When were you married? You know, what does he do? So, yeah, they ask me, what does he do? When did you guys get married? Um, you know, they just asked me questions and as I was answering, they were just like, okay, okay, like, you, I could tell they had already scanned my documents and uh, my visa and they had all my information there. So, they were asking me simple questions, that was it, right? Now, because there were two people that were standing there, so when the guy looked at our passports, right, he now saw that arrow, right, he actually saw it. He now turned to the other guy and said, because I was listening on my ear, I was doing, hey, Cora, stay one place, Eva, come here, Sophia, come, let me hold your hand now. I thought I was doing there, I was just trying to be normal, eh? but my ears <laughs> were inside their mouth, like, I was not looking at them, I was looking at my children, but my ears were inside their mouth, because I was like, I want to know what, they, what they're going to say, I want to, because they were talking to each other while they were asking me questions, so I was just trying to be very alert. The guy now said, oh, look, the, these names are here, but they're not there, but it's not a big deal. The other guy was like, yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. They just took the stamp. 
just stamped. Pam, 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 pam. Give us back my passport and said we should go. I was like, oh, thank you. But in my soul, I was mad. <laughs> I was mad. I was like, so these people made us pay. Mind you, we had to go back to the apartment that we were che checked out of, right? We went back to our apartment and we paid for extra five days. Now, the company covered it, okay? So it's not like money left our account. But it still pained me because it was unnecessary expenses. It then dashed me that money. I know how much I, I know what I have to use that money to. It then dashed me the money. I had to go and pay it for us to spend extra days in Port Harcourt, okay? So I was mad in my spirit. I was like, ah, Nigeria, you do this one, okay? Because I have no, I know, even at the airport in Nigeria, the day they bounced us, I was telling my mom that even if I pass this thing and go to UK immigration, they will not stop us. Because, I mean, it doesn't work like that. They will not stop you. Highest thing that they will say, oh, this is an error, but they already have your details. They already know who they gave visa to. So it's not, it's not going to be a, a big deal, right? You know, so I wasn't telling her that, but even though I knew it, it still, it still entered my soul when... I said, wait, look, that's just this is how it happened though. Like I'm not exaggerating though. The guy showed his friend and said, I see his friend. The guy showed his colleague or whatever and said, Oh, look, there, there are names here, but there are no names here, but it's not a big deal. That was saying, yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. He just took the stamp and stamped it. Pam, 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 pam. That was it. No extra questions. All the documents where I carry for hand, like uh uh uh, 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 uh all the documents where I carry for hand, they didn't even ask me for one document. I carried I carried all my documents. They didn't even ask me for one. I just told me to go. I just carried my children. First of all, we even stayed in the line for family, so we went fast. Like I didn't have to queue for long. Just gave us everything. We just put our things and entered. Like no issues, no wahala, no wahala whatsoever. And I was, I was like, anyway, you guys, I have talks too much. <laughs> but anyway, that was it, and that was how we eventually came here, and we've been living here, and we've been living our best life, having our living our best life. <laughs> Actually, my kids are living their best life. Me and my husband were just living, okay? We are living, we are thriving, we are surviving. But as per living their best life or, you know, enjoying themselves, um, those ones are for my kids. But we were just, we're just, we're alive and we are doing well. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!